In 2005, an arrangement between Canada, Mexico and the United States was made. This arrangement, unannounced to the public, unregulated by Congress, merges the United States, Mexico and Canada into one entity, erasing all borders. It's called the North American Union, and you might want to ask yourself why you've never heard of this. In fact, there is only one mainstream reporter who has actually heard of and has had the courage to cover this issue. The Bush administration's open borders policy and its uh, decision to ignore the enforcement of this country's immigration laws is part of a broader agenda. President Bush signed a formal agreement that will end the United States as we know it. And he took the step without approval from either the U.S. Congress or the people of the United States. It's a deal that few have even heard of. It's being done again by very few people at the very top on behalf of the investment class. But the working class of people, uh, political officials across our country from communities, uh, from cities and so forth, they don't know anything about this. This isn't some trade agreement. It is a total removal of sovereignty from these countries, which will also result in a completely new currency called the Amero. Fall. Um, apart from that, I think one thing people who are dollar-based need to focus on is the Amero. That's the one thing that nobody's talking about that I think is going to have a big impact on, uh, on everybody's life in Canada, the U.S., and uh, Mexico. The Amero is the proposed new currency for the North American community, which is being uh, developed right now between Canada, the U.S., and Mexico to make a borderless community much like the EU, and uh, the dollar, Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar, and the Mexican peso replaced by the Amero. By default of this agreement, the American Constitution will eventually be obsolete. You would think that a situation like this would be on the cover of every major newspaper. That is until you realize that the people who are behind this movement are the same people behind the mainstream media, and you are not told what you're not supposed to know. The North American Union is the same concept as the European Union, the African Union, and the soon-to-be Asian Union, and the same people are behind all of them. And when the time is right, the North American Union, the European Union, the African Union, and the Asian Union will be merged together, forming the final stages of a plan these men have been working on for over 60 years. A one world government. A globalist is someone who believes in globalism, and globalism essentially is uh, the desire for one world government, one world military, one world economy, um, which on a broad philosophical basis may not be that bad. But the problem is, is that we are being pushed into globalism by secrecy and by deceit and uh, nobody's getting a chance to actually consider the ramifications or consider the methodology that's being used to push us into this globalization. Uh, and that leads to the $64,000 question. Let's assume that these globalists, and they make no s secret about their desire for one world economy, one world government. Let's assume that they're successful. What is our guarantee that some new Hitler-like tyrant won't gain control of that worldwide mechanism. The, the driving force behind globalism is just plain old socialism. Because if they want to control every person in the world, if they're going to take care of you from cradle to grave, if they're going to take care of the education system, they're going to take care of the health system, all of that requires central administration and the wealthy elite who have the money and the power know that if they can create a one, one world global social system that they can control the central authority. In other words, world control, world domination. The, one of the oldest desires in, in the history of the world going all the way back to Alexander the Great. The way that this can be done with a very few people, at the peak, that is, is because if you look at every organization today, 
be it uh, a university, a school, a government, a secret society, anything, a multinational company, business of any kind, they're structured as a pyramid, which works like this. In any organization, uh, you've got a very, very few people at the peak of the pyramid. That very few people know exactly what that organization's about, what its real agenda is, what it's really trying to achieve. The further you come down from that peak in any organization, you're meeting more and more and more people who know less and less and less and less about what the organization's really about. They only know their part. The CIA call this compartmentalization, keeping from everyone else in the pyramid how what they're doing in apparent innocence links in with what other people are doing in apparent innocence to produce a very sinister pattern. The Freemasons are a classic example of this. Uh, when you say um, that the Freemason secret society is involved, uh, people think that you must be saying that every Freemason wants to manipulate the world to global dictatorship. Utterly ridiculous. Of course they don't. But if you, if you look at the Freemason structure, the vast overwhelming majority of Freemasons in the world, they never get higher than the bottom three levels of degree, the overwhelming majority. But in the Scottish rite of Freemasonry, which pervades much of world politics, particularly in America and other areas, there's another 30 degrees above that to the 33rd degree, which the vast majority of Freemasons never get near. And there's another 13 levels not officially accepted to exist, which some people call Illuminati degrees, which at that level, the Freemason secret society is in a different universe to the part where the vast majority of Freemasons exist right down here. Compartmentalization, this is how it works. So every one of these institutions that control the direction of the world and our daily lives is a pyramid. The banking system is a pyramid. You go into the local bank, the person you meet across the counter won't even know what's going on in the bank manager's office behind them, let alone what's going on at board level and, and higher. So the banking system is a pyramid going to a peak. The intelligence agency network in the world is a pyramid going to a peak. The multinational company network is a pyramid. So is the global media and so on. And there is a global pyramid within which all these work, in which the peaks of all these individual pyramids, banking, uh, business, media, etc., fuse into one peak. And up there, it's speculated by many people there perhaps may be no more than 13 families, 13 people at the peak, pervading down through these different levels the same basic policy, which is pushing the world towards more and more centralization of power. There is this like cozy little <coughs> myth that is perpetuated between politicians and the media. Politicians walk the world stage as if they are the final arbiters of power in the world. So when a president speaks, the cameras run and it's flashed around the world, prime ministers and such like. The media report the world as if presidents and prime ministers are the final arbiters and decision makers in the world. Which means that the people above the level of presidents and prime ministers that really make the decisions, they're never looked at or exposed by the mainstream media because they're not accepted to exist. Well, I was uh, in the FBI for 27 and a half years. And at the time of my retirement in 1979, I was the senior special agent in charge of the FBI Los Angeles office. I developed information personally about just extensive corruption in the government, uh, not only at the federal level, but all the way down to the city and state level across this country. I have information about corrupt judges, corrupt law enforcement, uh, prosecutors, um, county officials, uh, judges. It involves uh, drugs, involves pornography, calls, involves prostitution, uh, it involves the cults, a pedophilia. The, the bottom line is to take over the, the country and the world. For what, though? Power, greed. Uh, this goes back over 200 years, back to 1776, with the establishment of an organization known as the Illuminati, mm -hmm. 
And if your listeners don't know what the Illuminati is, they need to run down to the library and look it up and do some research. Because in, uh, on May the 1st, 1776, a fellow named Adam Weishaupt, uh, German, set forth 25 goals at the request of uh, the Rothschild group uh, that they needed to uh, initiate in order to take over the world. We're talking about destroy the sovereignty of countries and destroy religions. And that's where it really started in modern day. And right today, uh, believe it or not, and we have the documentation for this, we are probably 90%, their goals have probably been filled at, at the great rate of about 90%.